Hi guys, and welcome to this series on how to publish your Chrome extension to the web store. I'm Jack. And I'm Amy. And we are here to help you through the process. In the last video, we talked about how to find the Chrome developer dashboard, how to register as a new Chrome developer. We walked through the dashboard account settings and how to package our extension. On this video, we will look at the next steps. What data does the dashboard derive from the manifest JSON file? The difference between the extension summary and the Chrome store description. How many screenshots can be included? What tile sizes are required? And what URL fields are available? Okay, let's go. Okay, so where do we upload our package? If you click on the new item button on the top right corner, a model will pop up and you can drag your package there or you can browse to it. Now, if you note, it says the package icon must be included in the zip file of your app. And this means that currently the new dashboard will derive the big, the bigger icon, the 128 by 128 from your manifest JSON. In our case, we are uploading a new version of local audio player. So let's go ahead and click upload new package and we will see the same model and we can drag our new version, which is local audio player version 1.0.1 to upload this new version. So let's talk about the data that's derived from the manifest JSON on the package tab. Okay, let's go to the package tab and here we can see two columns, draft and published. Now, the draft column will show you all the information of the newer version of your package, like the one that you just dragged. And in the published column, you can see the version and the information of the current version of your extension in the Chrome store. Okay, let's talk about store listing tab. Why are the title and summary grayed out? Okay, so this is another aspect that is derived from the manifest, which is the title and the summary. Um, they cannot be changed or edited from the Chrome store. So let's say you made a mistake on the description or you want to change the name, you're gonna have to do it and in manifest JSON file. So you will have to, you know, go to your manifest, change it, and then repackage, and then upload again. Uh, but please note that any time that you make any little change to your Chrome extension, you have to increment the version number. Even if it's a minor change, like to the manifest file, let's say you have a misspelling on the description, um, you still have to go, like in our case, we would have to go from version 1.0.1, .1, we would have to go to 1.0.2. So what's the main difference between the summary and the detailed description? Okay, so the summary or a description in the manifest is a limited to 132 characters. This description should explain in simple language what the extension does so that with a quick glance, the user knows exactly what it does. The store listing description should explain in detail the features of your extensions and how to get started. This will help your extension be approved by the Chrome store developer team a lot faster because it will be really easy for them to understand what your extension does and what its purpose is. Let's have a look at some listings in the Chrome web store so we can see how the manifest summary and the detailed description that you put in in the web store show up in the, in the web store listings. So here we have DocuSign plus, plus Gmail, and you can see the summary is here. This is the, the description that is in the manifest. And let's look at a couple others. Netflix Party, it shows here. Watch Netflix remotely with friends. And then Grammarly, write your best with Grammarly for Chrome. 
once again, the manifest description. Now, if we click on it, you can see that Write Your Best with Grammarly for Chrome is the first line in the overview element on the uh, web store page. And then it goes on and says, by installing the extension, etc., etc. This part here is the detailed description in the Chrome Web Store. This part up here is your summary uh, description from the manifest JSON. And your detailed description should be detailed. This is the description that will explain to the Chrome Web Store team as they as they look into your extension, as they go to approve your extension, they'll explain what, how it works, what it does, what the user should expect, and how to get started. So what kind of graphics do I need? Okay, so here we can see we have screenshots, promo video, and tiles. So let's talk about them. The screenshots are very important because they help the user understand what your extension has to offer and it clearly shows the Chrome Store reviewing team what your extension is supposed to do. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at some examples. Okay, so in this case, in the local audio player, you can see how we include on half the page the actual, what the extension looks like which is an audio player, and on the side it shows a feature about it. So it remembers where you left off, um, it has a sleep timer, um, it also has backwards and forwards with the keyboard shortcuts, and it has a quick explanation like, oh, this is not working for me because it needs to, the, it needs to allow the local file. So this is the first thing that the user will see. Okay, so you can also include a YouTube URL right below. It says promo video. All right, let's go see where that will be in the listing. Okay, so here we have Clip64 Base64 Decoder, and this one has a video. So if you click on it, it can show you exactly how it works. So you select your Base64, you right click, and it copies it to your clipboard and then you paste it. So it, it doesn't have to be a long video. You, it can be like a long promo, getting you excited about it. But it can also just be a short video showing how it works. Um, if it's a right click menu or if you click the browser action, um, it's really it's a really good thing to include. So what about the promo tiles? Okay, so we have three sizes. We have the small, the large, and the marquee promo tile. The small promo tile is the only one that's required, but I would strongly advise to include all three. Uh, let's go to the store and see where each one of these are displayed. Okay, so here we are in the Chrome Web Store. Which tile is this up here? Okay, so the top one is going to be the marquee. So that is the, the, the largest size. Okay, and then this will be the small one here. Those are the small. Um, let's go ahead and search for one so you can see where else we can find it. Um, okay, so they're also displayed when you search it. Now, as you can see, the bottom one, the local media player, they did not include the small tile. And by default, they just add the 128 pixel icon that you add. And it just does not look good. It does not look professional. So... Um, I believe this is when it wasn't required they uploaded this, but right now right now you do have to include it. It's it's required. So um get a designer or get creative and just something that really clearly shows the user what it is that your extension is about. So the Chrome Web Store does provide some guidelines for your screenshots and your promotional images, and we'll add a link in the description for that so you can see what they require. Okay, let's talk about the URLs. Okay, so we have three different URLs, the official URL, the homepage URL, and the support URL. For this section, we're going to be using the Chrome extension, explain and send screenshots as an example. 
Okay, so here we are at Explain and Send Screenshots, and it is a Chrome extension that you can use to have a screenshot or record your screen. Okay, so in the official URL would be the main site. So that is, uh, in this case, the first one over here, jasonsavar.com, which has all his extensions. He has Checker Plus and other things. And then he has the explain and send screenshots. Okay, the homepage URL is the extension page, which is the the page that he explains a little bit more how the extension works and a link to the Chrome star. So as you can see, he has a, a lot more explanation of the extension. You can add more screenshots, put up, put more videos, um, and just explain a little bit more about what it's, what it is about. Um, the third URL is the support URL. And Jason, in this case, he has provided a forum where you can talk about different feature requests or any bug reports. And um, you can do it in this format or you can do a fact and, you know, explain like there's always questions that the user may have that are not easily apparent. And you can include that URL too help the user understand your extension better. Okay, so mature content. If you have any questions about if your extension uh, has mature content, you can click more info. They have some guidelines that'll help you decide uh, whether or not to check that box. So what about the Google Analytics ID? Okay, so package extensions can use the Chrome Platform Analytics Library. If you want to include analytics from the Chrome Web Store, you can enter your analytics ID here. Well, that's it for this video. In the next episode, we will talk about how to explain our Chrome extension to this Chrome Store development team. We will share why we need to explain our extension, what is a single purpose, how to explain our permissions, and what is remote code. For all this and much more, join us on the next video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below.